Let's talk a little bit about turf and shade today. One of the most common questions we get in our offices is, I have this shady spot in my yard, my grass isn't doing very well. Well, to understand the relationship between sunlight, shade, and turf, we need to talk a little bit more in depth about what goes into this whole process, this whole complex, if you will. All plants have to have light to survive. If you remember back to your fifth grade science class, I'm sure your teacher taught you about photosynthesis. It's the process where plants take energy, light energy from the sun, and with the building blocks of atoms and molecules around them, turn them into sugars and carbohydrates. And that energy that they create, which they convert from sunlight into sugars and carbohydrates, that's what fuels all of life. Anytime you put any plant into the shade, you're putting it on a diet. So you can put fertilizer out there in huge quantities, but if the plant's not able to get to light, then it's not able to feed. It's not able to convert that into energy by photosynthesis. One of the things you have to realize about turf grasses are they're from savanna or plains type ecosystems. We don't find turf grass plants too much in forest type environments. They're not really from that shade ecosystem. So we need to realize that at any time, if you're putting a plant into a shaded environment, you're kind of putting it into an ecosystem where it's not really comfortable at. There's two types of shade. One would be from buildings, and one would be from trees. Building shade is really interesting because it doesn't move, but it can be really solid. For instance, if you have turf grass on the front side of a building, on the north side of a building, later into the fall, that could be a problem. You need to check your yard or lawn and see what kind of angles do I have? What, what does the sun look like when it's the highest on June 21st? And what does it look like the rest of the year? That'll give you a real good idea of how well it's gonna do in a particular area if you realize that that's gonna change over time. Trees are the other big part of shade in the garden. And we need to talk about not all trees are created equal. Um, some trees, and their shade's not too severe. For instance, pine shade. Almost all turf grass species can do well in pine shade. But there are other trees like magnolias that have a thick, really large leaf canopy that's really tough for light to get through, therefore it's really tough for turf grasses to survive there. There's other trees that can be problematic as well. For instance, anything in the walnut family. Um, these plants have developed over the years the ability to actually secrete a poison through their leaf tissue called juglin. And as it hits the ground, it basically poisons all the, all the plants underneath it somewhat. Some plants are more susceptible than others, but if you're in that walnut family, which are pecans, walnuts, and hickories especially, it can be really tough to grow turf grass under those trees. If you have problems IDing your trees, talk to your local extension agent. He can help you out with that. But many times it's more about the type of tree and the light that's getting through it than just the tree alone. We need to talk a little bit about how to assess your site to see if turf grass is gonna do well there or not. One thing that we need to realize that when we talk about this is the human eye is really poor at seeing degrees of shade. We can tell if there's shade there or not but the amount of shade there, how heavy that shade is, the human eye is really poor at. Look at this diagram, letter A and letter B. Now, you're not gonna believe this, and some of our folks still don't believe it until they cut it out and lay them side by side, but A and B are the exact same shade. Doesn't look like it from the diagram, and that's the optical illusion. That shows you, it illustrates why the human eye is so poor at seeing degrees of shade. A and B are the exact same color. 
when you go out on your site, since you know that the human eye is not that great at seeing it, how heavy the shade is, is to look at the area. Is there anything growing there now? If you go to an area and there's not even a weed growing underneath the tree, chances are turf grass isn't going to grow there as well. There's several things we can do to the trees that'll help the turf grass grow. Simply limbing up the trees to take those lower limbs off, to prune them back, just reducing those lower limbs so more sunlight can get through that canopy can make a huge difference in the quality and the ability of your turf to withstand shade. You know, one easy thing we can do is just remove the number of trees in an area. Say you have a thick area of eight or nine pine trees. You know, you take out three or four of those, it can make a huge difference of the amount of light that reaches your turf grass and still provide that nice cooling shade that we all like. The last step in the process is picking the right turf grass. Now, many times folks jump right to this last step and hope that if they pick the right turf grass, it'll work and fix their shade problem. Well, there's no silver bullets in the turf grass. As, you could, as you've seen from this whole segment, shade is a pretty complex issue. So if we just try to fix it with just the genetics, just the type of turf grass, we're probably gonna fail. You still need to work through all these steps to make sure that turf grass will do. But there is big differences in the uh, tur different turf grass's ability to withstand shade. For instance, Bermuda grasses. You know, that's still the predominant long grass in the southeast. However, Bermudas, as a general rule, are really poor in the shade. They require full sunlight. Until the release of Tiff Grand Bermuda, which can tolerate a moderate amount of shade, that changed the equation a little bit, so we can look at Bermudas as well. But your regular Tiff Way 419 Bermuda is really poor in the shade and it's the most popular lawn grass in the south, so that's probably why we're talking about this in the first place. There's other grasses we can talk about as well. For instance, in the upper south, where the temperatures are cooler, Charlotte, upper suburbs of Atlanta, for instance, fescue is really hard to beat in the shade. Does well there. In the lower south, Mercedes St. Augustine does really, really well in the shade. St. Augustine's in general do really well in the shade, but not all St. Augustine's are shade tolerant. For instance, there's Floritan that has no shade tolerance whatsoever. So you also need to not only look at the species of turf grass, but also the variety. Centipedes. Centipedes do really well in, the, in acid shade situations like pine shade. Not super heavy oak type shade, but pine shade where you have acidic soils, Centipedes do really well there. Fine textured zoysias do great in the shade in a really broad area. They need some sunlight and preferably some direct sunlight, not all day, maybe two or three hours, but they do really well in shady conditions as well. Of course, textured zoysias can do well in shade if we mitigate some of these factors as well. You know, there's a lot of people out there that'll tell you you know, I've got a grass that, do, that does great in the shade in all locations. Well, I don't really think that's the way, that's the way of it. Uh, if you look at this whole complex issue of shade we've been talking about, it's complex. And to say, oh, I have a grass that'll fix all the problems, well, that's not really the case. We need to look at all these issues to make sure that in your lawn, your turf is gonna do the best it can do and really where you'll have that nice lush lawn that you're looking for. So today I'd like to talk to you about some of the problems that grass can have growing underneath the tree. The shade, the shade can reduce photosynthesis which weakens the plant, weakens the, the root growth. You also have to understand that underneath the tree, there, there are roots on the tree also, and the tree and the grass roots are competing. They're competing for water and nutrients, and that weakens the tree as well as the grass, so it is a problem. Some people don't think about the increase in disease problems with the trees, increase in shade, 
plants don't dry out as quickly and that leads to more disease. So that, that can be the problems, the shade, the reduction in photosynthesis, the competition for water and nutrients and the increase in disease. It all makes for a weak turf underneath the tree. So what can you do? You can increase the amount of light underneath the tree. You can raise the crown of the tree. You would like to see the crown of the tree, that's the lowest branch of the tree, to be about eight feet above the ground, or even higher if possible, you get more, more light. You can go through and thin the tree a little bit. Some branches try to open up the light. Of course, there are some trees growing grass underneath the tree is much more problematic than others. Things like magnolias, willows, water oaks, willow oaks, oaks in general, can be very difficult to grow grass underneath those trees with their dense shade. Uh, things, high branch trees, particularly like pine, you can grow grass closer to the tree. Uh, so those are things you can do to the tree to increase the growth of grass underneath the tree. You can select different cultivars or, or different species of grass that do better in shade. Things like fine fescue, tall fescue do well underneath the tree. Some of the warm season turf grasses like zoysia, particular cultivars of zoysia, and then also St. Augustine do, do well. Bermuda, it is more problematic. There are certain cultivars, Tiff Grand is one cultivar that will grow better underneath the tree. So what if your grass is really struggling and you're just, you've given up on the grass? Well, what can you do? Well, one very important thing you can do is mulch the tree. The tree loves mulch. You think in the woodland situation, it's covered with organic matter from its own leaves and other plants. And so you can bring in a, in a pine bark or in a pine straw and mulch underneath the tree. That will cover those surface roots that you have with some of your water oaks and your maples. Those roots that grow along the surface, it's not good to nick those as you're mowing. So you can cover those with mulch. You could put, plant a ground cover um, among, uh, a, a, underneath the tree, something that grows better in the shade. Maintenance-wise, taking care of your grass, what can you do to increase growth near a tree? Several things you, you can do. Of course, you got this incredible competition between the roots of the grass and the roots of the tree, and, and you need to add more, provide more water for the grass. Uh, typically, you would like to double the amount of water near the tree so that grass can compete. You also want to raise the level of mowing. If you mowed it one inch, you, your grass, you might want to raise it to two. If you mowed it two, you might raise it to three. This increases root growth because you get more carbohydrates when you have more foliage on the plant. That gets more root growth, deeper root growth, and you get more water. You also want to restrict the competition in that area. The plant is not, the grass is growing weakly, and if you walk on it, it makes it even weaker. And so you want to restrict any kind of walking ar around that area. Keep the leaves as they fall off the grass, anything that would intercept the light, try to reduce that. You know, we've always set a good baseline measurement for the amount of sun you need in a, in a lawn is four to six hours of direct sunlight. Well, we'd really like for you to get out there and look at your lawn area over the entire day because the sun tracks from east to west and as it moves, the shadows and the shading is gonna change over the entire day. If for instance, you have sunlight during the middle part of the day when the sun's at its greatest intensity, maybe you can get away with less than that. But if it's early morning or late afternoon when the sun's not so intense, maybe you need a few more hours than that. So it's really important to look at each site in particular. There's, you know, like we said, that's just a good general idea, but each site's different. So you really need to assess it. You know, we were more than willing to have our folks come out um, and help you assess your, your site. We have light meters. We can actually measure and tell you whether or not we think turf's gonna do well, or the turf of your choice is gonna do well in a particular site. So we're always willing to help you do that.